Welcome back. It is a busy week for the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve Chair Jenny Allen headed to Capitol Hill today to testify before Congress's Joint Economic Committee, where she will be grilled on monetary policy and the fallout from the election. Joining me right now in a first on Fox Business interview, Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank President and former Assistant Se uh, Secretary of Treasury, Neil Kashkari. Neil, good to see you again. Good to see you, Maria. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So what are you expecting out of Janet Yellen today? What, what do you think we are going to see in terms of the conversation? I think it's going to be a wide-ranging conversation on her outlook for the economy, her outlook for interest rates, and uh, a discussion of financial regulation that's obviously been in the news. I'm hopefully part of the conversation and helping to shape where we're going from a regulatory standpoint, but I think everything's on the table for yeah, her. Yeah, I want to talk about that because yesterday you spoke to the Economic Club of New York, of course, about what you have dubbed Minneapolis plan. Your plan lays out a blueprint uh, for ending too big to fail banks, and, and you've spoken about this quite a bit. You think that uh, with the new administration we will see an end to too big to fail at this point? I, I hope so. I think it's not a partisan issue. I've heard from senators and congressmen and women on both sides of the aisle who are concerned that the biggest banks are still too big to fail. We analyzed the history of financial crises. We've now got a 67% chance today of another financial crisis in the next century and another, another bailout. I think that's way too high. Our plan can drive that to as low as 9%, which is much better, and the economy will be better off in the long run. You, you said that your plan requires the incoming Treasury Secretary to certify that a bank does not pose a systemic risk to the financial system. Um, seems like that would make sense, obviously. Why is this so crucial? to the proposal and how are they going to certify such a thing? Well, there's ways of analyzing how large they are, how interconnected they are, how many spillovers they would be if they were to fail. Today, there's no time limit. Banks can enjoy their implicit status as being too big to fail, potentially indefinitely. We're going to put a hard deadline and say either you are truly not too big to fail or we're going to ratchet up your capital requirements so you virtually can't fail. You know, this conversation has come up a lot uh, when I've had Jamie Dimon on the show, when I've had um, Brian uh, Moynihan on the show. And, and with Jamie Dimon, who's obviously the largest of the banks there and, and maybe connected uh, the most, um, was that you want a large bank because you want an institution to be able to handle complex transactions. Let's say IBM needs a lending instrument uh, that may be very complex or different than, than a smaller company. You want to be able to go to a large institution to do so. What's the pushback on that? Sure. That's fine. Then the economies of scale and scope that Jamie's talking about, he should be able to afford higher capital requirements. If, if his customers are actually better off for his scale and scope, he can afford to hold enough capital that the rest of the economy is not at risk. If he can't, then that means his business doesn't work, and then that's not a public policy problem. So are you saying it's okay to be too big to fail so long as you have the capital? Correct. It's like a nuclear power plant. Nuclear power plants are devastating to society if they melt down. So we don't ban nuclear power. We regulate them so much they virtually can't fail. Yeah, okay. So we'll see about this because Trump has been very clear. He wants to roll back regulations as part of his economic plan. And part of that is actually uh, unraveling Dodd-Frank. Does that go right into the face of what you're saying in terms of too big to fail and ending that? Well, the details matter. I think there's actually going to be consensus that we need to address the biggest banks and the risk that they pose to the economy. And if you really address that, then you can relax regulation on the small banks that are not systemically risky. I think there's common ground across party lines on this. Because isn't it true that over the last six or eight years, uh, lending has actually slowed? Well, no, granted, we're coming off of the worst financial crisis in a generation. But these last few years, people are saying they can't even get a loan. Lending has slowed because of the regulation. Well, interest rates are very, very low. Borrowing costs are very, very low. One of the questions we have as a central bank is why investments has gone down. A lack of confidence, uh, maybe projects that are, are less attractive than they had been in the past. So that is a key factor, but it's not because interest rates are high. Remember, we've done everything we can at the Fed to keep interest rates low to spur lending. So borrowing costs are low, but there may be other headwinds in the economy. How does it feel to you right now, the economy? Do you think higher rates are justified? Well, I, I'm pleasantly surprised by how the markets have moved in the past week or so. And now it's too soon to draw any conclusions. But if the, market, if the economy is feeling more confident about the future and it is going to lead to more investment and it may lead to higher inflation, then that would justify higher interest rates. But we need to see. We need to see how the data comes out. Now, I mean, there's so much criticism that the Fed has kept rates at way too low levels, which is why everybody's expecting a hike December 14th at the next meeting. 
Well, again, we'll see. I'm looking at core PCE, the core inflation measure. I'm looking at inflation expectations and the headline unemployment rate. The economy has created a lot of jobs over the last few years. It has not yet been inflationary. That's been a good thing, putting more Americans back to work. We certainly don't want to cut that off prematurely before we see any real signs of inflation. Take